Yeah. Hello, welcome to um, my video channel, Questions of Doubt and Corporate Valuation. My name is uh, Bernhard Schwetzler. And our today's uh, question of doubt is, shall I use the Gordon Shapiro model or the value driver model for the terminal value calculation? So the topic of today relates to a topic that we already have addressed in our last sessions and last videos, that is uh, the impact of growth uh, in the terminal value calculation of corporate valuation. Uh, and we already have introduced the Gordon Shapiro model that uh, links the rate of return of the assets and the retention rate uh, and combines them um, as the growth rate then as a result of this combination. Yeah? So um, today I would like to introduce first uh, an extension of this, of this Gordon Shapiro model that has been developed by Mark Gotthard that is called uh, the value driver model and then compare the two models uh, and uh, will highlight some bright sides and some dark sides um, when comparing the two against each other. Okay, so first let me introduce uh, this value driver model here. Yeah? Um, the most important extension or the most important feature of this model compared against the Gordon Shapiro model is that it allows to distinguish with respect to the rate of return between the rate of return on the old assets, that is, uh, the, the depreciation is always reinvested and uh, the level of the old assets is kept constant. These assets earn a rate of return that is again referred as ROIC. Uh, and um, the rate of return on the net investments, that is uh, on the newly acquired assets on top and beyond the depreciation, um, that is then referred to as RONIC. And as this example tries to show and highlight um, the growth of the free cash flows and the earnings of the notepads is completely driven by the rate of return on the newly acquired assets, that is, uh, on the net investments. So in order to highlight this, we distinguish ROIC on the old assets, that is, uh, depreciation is always reinvested, and these assets then earn 15%, and the rate of return on the new assets, that is, on the net invested uh, capital beyond the depreciation, uh, just earns 10%. Yeah? So we start out with uh, 100 million assets uh, that earn old assets that earn 15% rate of return. So we get a notepad of 15 with a payout ratio of 60% that translates into a free cash flow of 9. And then uh, we retain 40%, that is 6. Uh, and so our new assets are then the, the net investments beyond the depreciation reinvested is 6 million. And these 6 million just earn 10%. Yeah? So whereas our, our old assets, the level of our old operating assets of 100 still earns its 15% with 15. Yeah? So we now have a, a notepad of 15.6. Again, payout ratio 60% is 9.36 uh, free cash flow. 40% retained is then 6.24. And then you see here, this is the accumulated net investments. So the six of the first period um, or of the, yeah, of uh, period number zero and the 6.24 period number one. So that adds up to 12.24, again, earning 10%, which is then 1.224. And so you see this again, our old assets earn 15%. Yeah? So, and if we now look at the growth rate of Notepad and at the growth rate of the free cash flow, then it becomes obvious and clear that the growth rate is completely driven by the rate of return of the accumulated new assets, so of the accumulated net investments, whereas the old assets and the reinvested depreciation then just always earns its 15%. You see here that uh, the total growth rate here is 4%. And that, of course, combines out of here 40% retention and 10% rate of return. Yeah? So this is uh, the extension um, of our Gordon Shapiro model. And as I said, uh, it is called the value driver model. Yeah? So uh, the valuation equation uh, is very similar to the Gordon Shapiro model. The only thing that changes is that we replace RYC by RONIC. Uh, and so... You see that all other features that we already have been discussing with respect to the Gordon Shapiro model, that is this famous triangle um, 
sanity check for the growth rate is of course also applicable for the value driver model. Yeah? So you see here, this is probably the most common version. That is, uh, we have the notepad times one minus the retention rate, that is the free cash flow over WAC minus G. And then we simply replace the retention rate Q by the ratio of growth over RONIC. And then we have this value driver model. So uh, let's now compare it against um, the standard Gordon Shapiro model uh, and um, just uh, highlight some bright sides and some dark sides of the value driver model when compared against the standard Gordon Shapiro model. Let's start with the bright side. Um, it is, of course, is a benefit uh, to have more flexibility to introduce the distinction between RYC as the rate of return on the old assets uh, and RONIC as the rate of return on the net invested capital that is uh, ad, uh, invested on top uh, of the old assets. Yeah? Because this allows to introduce one standard uh, assumption of economics that is decreasing returns to scales, that is uh, the marginal rate of return is shrinking. So in that sense, the more you invest, the lower the rate of return of the last incremental unit of investment, as I said, which is a reasonable assumption and which is one of the standard assumptions in economics. But there are also some dark sides uh, and some problems with uh, the value driver model when compared against Gordon Shapiro. And um, if we highlight these uh, disadvantages and dark sides, uh, then it is helpful again to look at this um, slide just highlighting uh, the derivation of the free cash flow. So you see that uh, this uh, um, is the notepad and this is uh, the free cash flow and the retention as the wedge between the two is of course equal to the net investments here, to the net investments into PPE or the, to the fixed assets, which is the difference of CapEx uh, and depreciation. And of course, the net investments into our working capital, so the delta net working capital. Yeah, so you see that this retention is the net over these figures. And that creates a particular problem um, because uh, just imagine uh, that um, we um, invest into fixed assets uh, and we have one machine that costs us 100 and has a lifetime of one year. That means that uh, this year's capex is equal to next year's depreciation. And now assume that next year's capex is 2% higher and is then 102. So the machine has become perhaps better technologically and has become a bit more expensive. Uh, and so you see then that it is not very reasonable to assume, um, as the value driver model does, that the same machine can be split in two components into 100, that is uh, reinvesting the depreciation, earning ROIC, and uh, into the two net investments, 100 minus 102, earning a RONI. So in that sense, it is hard to imagine that this is going to work out uh, if the equipment uh, and the machine is very, very large. I mean, it's easier if you would have had 100 machines uh, and then we could sort out and say two of the machines uh, then are perhaps of a newer generation and 100 machines um, that are replacing the old ones have the same properties than the old ones and that would be a reason so <clears throat> in that sense the less granular uh, the the investments into the fixed assets are in that sense the harder it is to believe that distinction um, between um, reinvested uh, depreciation and capex actually is. So, and uh, if we would add inflation to that, um, then of course the same problem would occur. Yeah? Just um, imagine in a nominal um, valuation equation um, that uh, we have a 2% increase in the purchase price of the equipment uh, in one year. So that again yields the result that uh, the nominal acquisition costs and the nominal capex in T plus one is 102. 
And then again, the same problem would occur um, that the same machine is now 102 uh, as a purchase price and the rate of return that this machine is going to earn should be split into RYC or earned on the 100 and RONIC earned on the additional two. Yeah, so in that sense, it's also hard to imagine and inflation uh, makes this uh, problem that we highlighted here above um, also to show up uh, in the term of value calculation. So in that sense, uh, to sum up, um, this dark side of the value driver model becomes um, the more important in that sense, the larger the blocks of the investments are. Um, whereas if we have granular and smaller investment units, then of course, uh, it might be possible to make this split. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.